Let's start with... Who else are we going to start with? What else are we going to start with? The game over the weekend. The game over the weekend. And it was Manchester City 2 to Liverpool and an idyllic day of football. An idyllic afternoon which exposed how beautiful this game truly is. It was elegant, tenacious, aggressive, advanced, beautiful shit house like it was everything under the sun and absolutely loved my time watching that game obviously i i expo i exposed expressed my thoughts on twitter um about the game and about what was happening through it we'll do we'll do a review we'll obviously do an in-depth review of it um right now but brief early thoughts it's going down to the wire it's going down to the wire it's a sprint to the finish now and one point, two clubs, seven games. That's the equation. And Liverpool obviously have the goal difference. City have the point. It's going to go down to the absolute wire. And I can't wait. I genuinely can't wait. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. And speaking on the game, let's do, let's do an actual review of the game itself. Because it was unbelievable. It was an unbelievable game of football. And... I saw the lineups. Not surprised at in the slightest about Liverpool's. Thought it was pretty standard. Um, Cities for the first six for the first um, seven players. Not a, not a shock. That front three. He started Gabriel Jesus and didn't start Riyad Mahrez or Jack Grealish. And I thought Mahrez was a lock to start personally because I thought he's been playing out of his skin this season. But he he went with he went with um he went with Sterling he went with Jesus and he went with he went with a front line that performed really well it performed really well and it created a lot of chances obviously Foden was the other player in that front three and obviously pre game I did my preview saying I think that he should that they should play De Bruyne as a false nine. Um, I'll eat my words on that. I think he played fantastically well in his role. I thought he was one of the better players on the pitch. Um, and I thought Jesus held his own brilliantly in in that role, or, or whether or not he was Sterling playing in that role, who knows. But obviously that, that front three is very fluid, right? With Just remembering the game now, I do think it was Sterling, but obviously Sterling had a great chance early on, which probably should have scored. And and then from then on, it, it's kind of seemed that... Okay, so we've spoken about the lineups. Let's speak about the game. Because the game's kicked off and my initial thoughts were, wow, Liverpool look sluggish. They look anxious. They look scared. They look hesitant. And I was like, wow, that's not what I wanted to see from Liverpool. And that's not what I thought I'd say from Liverpool anyway. And they got stuck in positions where they shouldn't get stuck in. They got caught out in positions where they shouldn't get caught out in. And City really capitalised. Obviously, that massive Sterling chance at the start of the game which which was denied and from then on I, I thought that that chance would kick Liverpool into gear and, and make them think oh wow alright we're in a game here like we're in, we're in the Premier League final essentially alright we got we got to go but they just didn't look like they were switched on and minutes later Kevin De Bruyne scores from a, from a free kick taken quickly, quickly and it was a really bizarre opening opening 15 minutes or uh, opening 10 minutes because City looked completely in control Liverpool looked out of it and I thought this could be a drubbing here this could be 2 3 4 nil, and really put the league to bed but credit to Liverpool they only need one chance and they got their one chance and they scored their one chance early on and it was a masterful ball from Robertson to the back post and it was very calmly played across by Trent and Jota was was there and very very Van Nistelrooy esque from um, Diogo Jota being in the right place at the right time, poking home the equaliser when his top, when his side potentially didn't didn't deserve it. So it was frantic opening fifteen, which saw two goals, one against the one one very early on, and then the other one against the run of play and. Liverpool from then on kind of held their own. They really turned the game into a, not chess match per se, but a really methodical, systematic style game. They really controlled it and got the game back on their terms. Maybe not in terms of possession, but they limited City in what they could do. And 
as the game drew on, that slowly seeped out. As soon as they scored, Liverpool, they got the game under control. And then as the, as the time ticked on, City got back into the game. And their, their second goal came from a masterful ball from, I'm pretty sure, Jao Cancelo. And Trent Alexander-Arnold caught out once again. And Jesus tiptoed to the back post and scored. And that was the avenue. I know that goal came from a corner but or from a free kick, but... Trent was, that side was targeted. That Matip and Trent side was targeted. They really went hell for leather down that side. Canseo Canseo had a fantastic game and Phil Foden as well really exploited Trent's positioning positioning issues and Matip's pace. Foden played really well and Cancelo had had a really good game as well. So that was clearly the avenue that they targeted pre-game and that was clearly the avenue that they went towards during the game and they found success through it because both maybe not both goals but there was a lot of a lot of City's attacks came from that left hand side and and for all Trent is fantastic at crossing the ball and an unbelievable playmaker defensively there is still a question mark a very faint question mark about his ability to I'm yawning it's it's 5 o'clock at night and I'm yawning well alright his ability to um to impact the game defensively. So they got away with it. I do think Matip didn't play one of his better games. And I also think Henderson as well didn't play one of his best games, which influenced that left-hand side for City because Henderson normally helps Trent out, helps Matip out. They play as like a three. And he didn't have a good game. I thought I thought he had a lot of um, nose, not nosebleed, but like a blood rush into the head moments where he was going, going, going. I wasn't really thinking. Um... Yeah, so I don't think Henderson played particularly well. Um, obviously, Jota scored, and then from from once, obviously once Jesus scored, rather, you know, I thought, in my opinion, I thought Liverpool just had to get to half time. If they could get to half time, two one down, still be really just be in the game, right? And they're like, all right, we can reset from here, and so that's what they did. And then, and then, ninety seconds, ninety seconds after the the full the half time whistle. I mean, the, the second half started even in Liverpool take um, equalise and beautiful finish from Sadio Mane. I think that was the first time Salah really had a, had a real foothold in the game. He, he did well to create that goal and from then on it was game on and it was almost as if, all right, what, who's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck because it kind of seemed that, seemed that after that Mane goal, both systems had cancelled each other out in a way. Now it was down to who's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck. And Raheem Sterling had the chance. He scored. It was a really good, really good finish, but he was flagged for offside. And whether or not it was offside, I mean, I've seen it once. I haven't seen it again. So my initial, when he scored, I thought could be off here. What? That's my initial reaction. Um, sorry, just putting the camera back in focus. There we go. Um, my initial reaction when he scored was that looks offside um, and then on, on the replay it was touch and go but it was ruled out and I mean you can't really do a lot about it now but I think that that kind of took the, the sting out of the game a little bit because City thought that they had broken through again and they'd got the lead for a third time and to have that ruled out is that soul crushing that, that heartbreaking moment of oh, fuck we've got to go again we've got to go again and this Liverpool, this Liverpool team were relentless. They didn't. There was no give in that Liverpool team, and credit credit to them. They 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 held on. They played really well, and obviously there was that Mara's free kick that hit the post very late on. And I thought that was the moment. Like I said, I thought the game would be decided by a moment, and I thought that was it. But um, fair credit, fair dues to to Liverpool. They held on. City potentially should have won the game, and if you look at the stats, yeah, okay, City. City did deserve to win that game based on the stats and the chances and etc but looking at it from a holistic perspective I think a draw was a fair result um, I can't believe I'm yawning and it's 5.10 in the afternoon I'm, I'm tired, it's because I didn't sleep I mean this game did finish at like 3.30 and I woke up at like 9 o'clock so I mean there's probably that but yeah I do think a draw in the grand scheme of things was the, was the best result and um yeah, that's going to be a interesting game to look back on in 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 eight ga- in eight weeks time when 
it's down to a sprint. Seven games, two teams, one point. And oh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm pumped for this month, month and a half, really, because it's going to show what both teams are made of. And I'm going to pull my neck out on the line. I think Liverpool are going to win the league. I think Liverpool love being the hunters. They love putting that pressure on. They love taking it to the limit. And they are they thrive in that role. I don't think City can can hold on. I do think that the, the pressure will get to them and they'll bottle it. I, I don't I don't think Pep I think Pep will overthink one game and that one game will come back to bite them. I don't see Liverpool dropping points at all for the rest of the season. I see City dropping points pretty soon and it's going to be a tight, tight finish. But that's my prediction. Put my neck out on the line. I've said it now. So I can't can't take it back, can I? So, yes. Um, um, yeah, it's going to be one of those, oh, wow, type things where it's... Where it's um, where it's going to be... How, like, it's kind of hard to describe because it's going to be a thing of... Who it's cat and mouse. Who drops points? Do you drop points? Who like who drops points and who is that team to bottle it? I don't think any either team can necessarily bottle it, but who's going to be that team that that chokes? And it's going to be very interesting to see. And I think speaking on the game again, I think Edison's moment of madness was bizarre, bizarre, like really weird and. It almost seemed like he didn't care, which was which was the weirdest part. It almost seemed that it was like, oh yeah, it's alright, I'll just pass the ball out on on my goal line with a player up my ass. Like that was that was weird, and I guess it showed that I, I that was almost a microcosm of the whole match. You had Liverpool who were that car that anxious, really like hesitant team. City was so calm throughout, so calm just picking their way through Liverpool, passing it around, no problem. And that was the microcosm of the game. You had you had, Edis, you had Edison, who even when he looked panicked, was calm as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber, even. And when Ed, when Allison was even in slight under slight slight pressure, he seemed panicky. So I guess that was that was the the story of the day, and one of those things which you can't. Which you, which we, sorry, you, you can't do anything about, but we'll look back on it and think, fuck, if Jota was, was three seconds quicker, or if Jota was, if Jota's legs were like 10 centimetres taller, or whatever, then he would have, he would have, um, he would have got there and, and, and poked home. But it is what it is now, can't change it, can't fix it, can't do anything about it, except talk about it and complain that it didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen. So, uh, I think that's it for that game review.